in this video lesson, we'll learn how to graph quadratic functions. So as you probably have learned already, when we graphed linear functions, we got straight lines. What do we call the graph of a quadratic function? The word for it is parabola. Now parabolas have one main problem, is that when you graph them, you can't have a perfect graph. When you have a line, you can just use a ruler, but parabolas are curves. So for this reason, we're only going to need two points through which we're going to draw the parabola, and it's going to be more or less approximate, but good enough. These two points are going to be the y-intercept and the vertex. I'll explain in a second why these two points. So we'll start with the y-intercept. The y-intercept is going to be 3. Kind of like in linear functions, it's that constant term that's added on. And what's the reason for this? Well, if you just plug in x equals 0, which we're about to do, when you plug in x equals 0, then you get y equals 0 squared, which is 0, minus 4 times 0, 0 again, plus 3. So you get just 3. So the point 0, 3 is on this parabola, and it's the y-intercept. Here, I've graphed it now. Now we want the vertex. Now we, we want the y-intercept because it's the easiest to calculate. You just plug in x equals 0. And the reason we want the vertex is it's because it's the point where the parabola turns around. Now I'm reminding you, or you could optionally go to my other video lecture about finding vertices, but the formula is negative b over 2a, where b in this case is negative 4, as I've shown with the little dotted lines, and a is just 1. So we get 4 over 2, which is just 2. So we know the x-coordinate of the vertex. Now we just plug it in to find the y-coordinate. So the y, we know that y equals x squared minus 4x plus 3, so the y-coordinate of the vertex is just plugging in xv, which is 2. So you get 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 3, 4 minus 8 plus 3 is the same as 7 minus 8, is the same as negative 1. So this tells us that the point 2, negative 1 lies on the parabola and that it's its vertex. So now what we, all we have to do is just draw a curve that goes through these two lines and it, it curves down from the first to the second and then when it reaches the second it curves right back up. And here I just made it a little better looking, made, but how exactly it looks is not that important because you can't really get it perfect anyway, just as long as it's good enough. I'm going to rewrite this formula so you can see it better. So here we've graphed our first parabola, but it was in standard form. So now we're going to graph parabolas written in the other forms, so root form and vertex form. So let's take the example y equals x minus 1 times x plus 3. This is the root form. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find the y-intercept first by plugging in x equals 0, and then we're going to find the vertex. So if x equals 0, then y will equal to just negative 1 times positive 3, because 0 minus 1 is negative 1, and 0 plus 3 is 3. So we get y equals negative 3. So here I've graphed the point 0, negative 3 x equals 0, y equals negative 3. So now we need the vertex, and we're going to be ready to draw again. Since we have the root form of the quadratic function, this is how we're going to find the vertex. In general, we're going to have x minus something times x minus something else, and this vertex is going to be those two somethings added over 2. As I have written it, a plus b over 2. And we have 1, plus negative 3, because it's x minus b, 
but we have an x plus 3. It's the same as x minus negative 3, so we have to add a negative 3. In other words, the sign is flipped. So we get negative 2 over 2 is just negative 1. So to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, we will plug in the x-coordinate into the function. We know xv equals negative 1, and we know that y equals x minus 1 times x plus 3. So yv equals xv minus 1 times xv plus 3, which is just negative 1 minus 1 times negative 1 plus 3. This in turn equals to negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4. So we have the full coordinates of our vertex, negative 1 comma negative 4. And here it is drawn on our coordinate plane. So now we just need to draw the parabola, and it's going to connect like this and then go back up because the vertex is where the parabola turns around. So here we've drawn it, and it's always a good idea to label, so we're labeling it again. y equals x minus 1 times x plus 3. And so we're good to go. So now we're going to move on to our last example. And this one is going to be in the vertex form. In the vertex form, you should always think of as a good thing. Because with the vertex form, you pretty much know the vertex right away. You don't even really have to do any calculations. It's just right in the formula. But first, we're going to find the y-intercept, which is also easy. You just plug in x equals 0, and it will simplify. If x equals 0, y equals 2. Well, 0 plus 1 is 1, so 1 squared minus 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So the point 0, negative 1 lies on this parabola. So I've marked it on the coordinate plane. Now the vertex. Well, it's a vertex form. So in general, we're going to have y equals something times x minus something else squared plus a constant. And here I have not written down the square, but it's there. But the point is that our minus h is equal to 1, so h is equal to negative 1, and the k is just equal to negative 2. So that those are the coordinates of our vertex. Negative 1 comma negative 2. There it is. So now we can draw our parabola. We have to connect those two points with a curve. And then on the other side, it swings back up symmetrically, actually. And there's the parabola. And of course, we label it y equals x plus 1 squared minus 2. I hope it's more or less clear to you now how to graph quadratic functions. Thank you for watching this video lecture.